There will be no cheesy, cherry-popping South Africanisms or play on words in this review, none, because this car is better than that. Cherry is back in South Africa, and they mean business. to be taken seriously and announce your return then you've got to make waves in the competitive compact crossover segment that is also where the volumes lie so what do consumers look for styling how the car looks is crucial specification and most importantly probably return for your hard-earned rands but let's start with the looks As is common today, you have a large grille, hexagonal in this case, and with a diamond type pattern creating a 3D feel, drawing you into the proudly displayed logo. Auto headlights and daytime running lights are standard across the range, while the turbo model gets you the full LED headlight treatment. Now, I like deliberate lines on a car, like these creases on the bonnet and the squared up edge to the daytime running light cluster. It's bold and strong. And then how this line follows the headlight design, creating a sharp edge for the view in profile. That line pulls through into this upturn on the rear window, which is such a great detail. And I'm really glad that they haven't gone with that sloping roof line trend that for me is so annoying. Instead, they've opted for the things that really matter. The good things, like, ease of access and having really good headroom. Having a longer wheelbase than their rivals means they've got way better legroom and comfort in the rear than their rivals too. What is quite bizarre though is that they don't actually tell you what the size of the boot is, but all you gotta do is a bit of trawling online and that information comes up. They say 340 liters. It does mean it's a little bit bigger if those figures are correct than uh, the Havel Jolian, but nowhere near what you get with the T-Cross at 385 liters, but then just no ways have this level of space headroom, shoulder width, and obviously knee room as well. In the Elite, you do get uh, the leather seats, but what is standard across the entire range, you get your USB charger, and for me, super cool, having air vents uh, in the back. So many vehicles don't bother with that. Alloy wheels are fitted across the range, brilliant. Urban and Comfort run on 16 inches, while our Elite and the Special Edition run on these darkened 17 inch wheels. Ground clearance is 170 or 180 millimeters, depending on the wheels you go with. And along with the side skirt design and integrated roof rails, the good looks continue in profile. They've carried through that crease into the light effect at the rear as well. I like the design of the rear LED light cluster. It's squared up at the outer edge, narrowing at the center, with the chrome strip as a link. I think it emphasizes the broad flanks. The rear is finished off with a spoiler with integrated LED brake light, antenna fin, the dual exhaust outlets, which are just there for show, and like in the front, a cosmetic scuff plate. How cool is this? Hold the lock button down for five seconds and the car starts itself. I mean, that is nuts. So what is cool, it means that on a hot, hot, crazy, mad day like today, I can get the climate to just right in my cherry before I get into it. It's amazing. That key in my pocket, it's going to unlock the doors. Have a look. Mirrors already opened up, so locks and unlocks with proximity as well. Obviously, when the car is started like this, if I don't have the key on me, I can't get in. So I can see us having lots of fun freaking people out in parking lots. But it's this level of technology you just don't expect on a car at this price point. And from a looks perspective, man, in the crowded compact crossover car park, this Cherry Tiggo 4 Pro is going to stand out. But you know what surprised me the most? This. Market, uncluttered, and incredibly well spent across the board. All models have a digital instrument cluster, 
The turbo models are just double the size at seven inches, offering more display and customization options. At this price point, that's pretty impressive. This well-integrated 10.25-inch touchscreen infotainment system is standard across the entire model lineup. It's fast and super easy to use. It's fully compatible with Apple and Android devices. You get two USBs in the front, Bluetooth connectivity, and the screen is also the display for your rear view camera. This and rear park distance control are standard on all but the entry level urban model. You can also slide down to access the climate control, but there are also these stylish fast switches if you don't want to go the touchscreen route. And also don't forget, you also do have access via the multifunctional steering wheel. But I really do love the treatment of their dual climate control system. It is really upmarket. It's not something we haven't seen before. It's just usually in well, your high-end Audis and Jaguars and Range Rovers, not in a 350,000 Range Cherry. Very cool. Uh, in our Elite model, they've also got a voice command system, which we are told has been given software that allows it to pick up all accents. Now, usually this is something that I just never ever use. I get so frustrated having to repeat the words over and over and over again. So let's see how it goes with its South African accent. Um, to access, you can either push the little voice button or you can go with, hello, Cherry. I'm listening. Can you cool the car, please? Got it. Decreasing the temperature in all areas to 17.5 degrees. What else? Well, across the range, you do have electrically adjusted side mirrors with an integrated indicator. Because we are in the Elite, the mirrors can fold in. It also gives you a tire pressure monitor, which is great. And my driving seat is now adjusted electronically. Um, across the range, though, the steering wheel is height and reach adjustable. So it really makes it easy to get into a really comfortable driving position. It is impressive, the level of specification and just yeah, just the feel of the interior. They've done a fantastic job here. All that's left for me to do now is to actually drive the car. I'm just hoping it's not going to be a wonder bra moment. Cherry have two in-house 1.5 litre four-cylinder engines on offer. If you go for the urban or the comfort, they make do with their naturally aspirated versions of the engine, which produces 83 kilowatts and 138 newton meters of torque. The entry-level urban is then paired to a five-speed manual transmission, where stepping into the comfort gives you a Cherry CVT gearbox. The upgrade to Elite and Elite SE sees you getting into the turbo versions of the engine, which obviously has an impressive increase in output as well. You're now looking at 108 kilowatts and 210 newton meters. And you now have a choice between a six-speed manual and that uh, CVT gearbox from Cherry. I'm really impressed. This engine is actually really good. And if you look at Cherry back home in China, they dominate all the engine awards, and it's not hard to see why. Uh, it's responsive. and, and that in itself is quite bizarre when you are driving in a CVT. It's the one transmission that the motoring journalists really hate. But if you actually understand how to drive it, in other words, don't stomp on the accelerator like you're trying to crush a roach, um, you actually do get the best out of them. And this one in particular is actually surprisingly good. They've actually stepped the transmission so it feels a lot more like a traditional auto gearbox, like now. There, kick down, accelerate. All I do is just slightly lift off the accelerator, and what it does is it upshifts and then drops those revs. So it's cool because you don't get that dreaded CVT drone in the cabin, nor do you feel like you're driving at the end of a bungee cord waiting for that recoil. From my experience, I'm I'm gonna say don't go for the comfort because I don't think the CVT gearbox is gonna work as well in the naturally aspirated uh, engine. It's the extra punch from the turbo that really makes this a surprisingly good CVT.
and also does come with the drive mode selector. You've got standard, you've got eco and sport. I've been driving with it in eco, but what is quite cool, I've gone into the onboard systems and I've actually gone and selected, even though everything else is eco, I've gone and selected the sport setting on the steering wheel because for me in normal mode, there is just zero feedback. Yeah, I mean, I know this is not a performance vehicle. You know, I'm not looking for this razor fine turn in and, and crisp response and feedback through the wheel, but I just hate that vagueness that you get around the center of the wheel where little adjustments are being made all the time, but that feedback doesn't go through to the wheels on the road. It's something I complain about with uh, with all the Koreans. Now, put it into sport mode and it actually weights the wheel up quite nicely. The, way, the wheel also becomes a lot more responsive. So when you are making little changes, those little movements on the wheel are actually relayed to, uh, to the steering. For me, this feel that I've got in sport mode should be the default setting on the steering wheel. What I've also really been impressed with is the ride and the build quality. It's got a softer setup as it should have for this application and there's like really no rattles. This test unit that we're in from Kelston um, has done 3,600 kilometers, nothing, dead quiet. And the insulation and the sound dampening is good because there's no noise in the cabin. Really impressive. I, I'm like, like really impressive. I'm kind of going, where's the catch? There's gotta be a catch here somewhere. Well, I can tell you, it's not the price. 350,000 Rand for all of this, that's going to rattle a few cages. The CVT is the one you want. Splash out an extra 10K for the special edition and you get additional cosmetic touches. Airbags are up from two to six. Vehicle stability control is standard across the range, which is brilliant, but the fuel consumption isn't that great. Well, look, the only catch I see lies in the actual brand value and equity here in South Africa. Why should we take the chance? They were here before and they left. What's to stop them from doing it again? Well, let me tell you what puts me at ease. They already have a 30 strong dealer network. The new model in their lineup, the Tiggo 8 Pro, has just arrived. And you obviously have the peace of mind that comes with the standard service plans and warranties I spoke about earlier. What is also super cool, if you do still own your Cherry after five years, they actually extend the warranty on the engine by another five years. And listen to this, 850,000 kilometers, it's crazy. Seriously though, most of us don't hang on to our cars that long, but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It's incentivizing you. It certainly is helping to create some brand loyalty, but I think more importantly for me, it's creating that we're not going anywhere noise in the marketplace. Here in the Eastern Cape, the Kelson Motor Group is looking after Cherry, and as a multi-franchise, they've got VW, they've got Toyota, they've got Ford, they've got Isuzu. That in itself is telling. But I think the timing is spot on for Cherry. Thanks to Havel, our consumers are happily owning and trusting Chinese products. But very importantly, they're also not plagued with the stock shortage that so many of the established brands are struggling with because of the microchip issues. I mean, who wants to wait six to nine months for their brand new car? Not me. Yeah, I know it's crazy. It's like I'm doing a bloody Cherry advertorial, but I'm not. Credit must be given where credit is due. And I'm not comparing this like Cherry then versus Cherry now. I'm going purely on merit, stacking it up against what I can buy in the segment on the road right now. It is that good. If you don't believe me, go and test drive one yourself. Oh wait, there is one thing that really, really irritates me. Can they not at least get the Cherry straight? It's not that hard.